We are going to be talking about Caden Patrick Young. He is a student or was, he was a student of the University of Idaho um, who unfortunately passed away. Um, there's been much speculation within the community that follows the Idaho 4 case um, about some of the people involved in his death and if they played some role in the Idaho 4 massacre or if they were somehow like involved like in the victim's community, you know, like if they knew them. Um, the Greek yeah, if community. They, yeah, yeah, because the people that were involved in Caden Young's unfortunate passing, um, he died way too young, um, were drug dealers. And that is not speculation. That is fact. Um, you know, the people we're talking about here, one is a, a young woman and one is, um, a, you know, 36, probably 37 now, um, year old man who has a rap sheet, a, like a rap sheet. Okay. It's pretty long and it's pretty extensive and it's pretty violent. Um, so I don't feel bad talking about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's fair to talk about anything that's public record out there. I, I mean, I think we can talk about anything as long as we're respectful. Yeah, so I agree. Um, so let's, let's talk, who was Caden Young? Um, Caden was born November 10th, the year 2000, in Boise, Idaho. He was the youngest of his family. Um, he was described as independent, caring, um, curious, a critical thinker, clever sense of humor, and had a stunning range of abilities. Um, he was a really good football player. Actually, there are numerous interviews with him on the internet. Hmm. All right, I am with Emmett High quarterback Caden Young, who's celebrating a thrilling 28-27 quarterfinal win over Blackfoot. How you feeling, man? Oh, it's great right now. It's great. Um, we were down one, and the defense got a safety. That might have been the best feeling I've ever had. Um, and then we didn't run the clock down, but the defense helped us out again. Um, big thanks to the defense. After winning games oh, when he awesome. was in high school, so like star player. Type. Yes, Got he it. was a star player. I think he was a quarterback, but I'm blanking on that. I think he was a star quarterback, but if I'm wrong on that, please correct me in the comments. I just know he was a really good football player. But when he went to the U of I, he seemed to leave that behind and instead pursued investigative journalism wow. and started writing for the Argonaut, the school paper. Interesting switch. Very interesting switch from yeah. jock to fraternity bro, but an investigative journalist. Yeah, and while in a fraternity, that's and so he was strange. the president okay. of his fraternity, um, of Alpha Kappa Lambda. Okay, he went from the secretary to the president, so he moved up. Does it say anywhere in there what year he was when this happened? Was he a four-year? Do you know if he was going for his master's? So, if not, I can look for it while you... Um, so, it sounds like his brother also went to the U of I. Um, numerous of his brothers actually went to the U of I. He repeatedly made the dean's list, held every, every high-ranking position in his beloved fraternity... Um, he was scheduled, scheduled to graduate in journalism with a minor in anthropology next fall. Okay. And he passed in 2023. So, so fourth year going into his yeah. fourth year. Got it. Okay. Exactly. Anthropology was his minor. Very interesting. Um, he had many plans that he was going to pursue. Um, Though this seems impossibly difficult for us, we are extremely spiritual family and embrace the thought, speak of the dead often, for that is how they live. Carmack McCarthy. 
That's a quote that they put in his obituary. Yeah, that's a really nice quote. I like that. He is with us. He is in us. And we talk with him daily, often laughing, sometimes crying, but always, regardless of what the moment brings, appreciative of the smart, clever, multi-gifted, wonderful chucklehead, Caden, our beloved brother and son. Hmm. Yeah, I think maybe the, his nickname was Cade because they keep calling him Cade in there too. With him being an investigative journalist, I've seen people draw connections like, hmm, had these people possibly accidentally run into something like Caden Young, like Kaylee Gonzalez, who was also very interested in true crime and a curious George. Well, her mom, Christy. Kaylee's mom literally described her as a sleuth. Literally said in an interview, Kaylee was a sleuth. I wonder what's on her computer. Right? I mean, they haven't given the family any of her tech back. None of it. Yeah. And the very first search warrant for like a social media, I think, is Kaylee on Reddit. If it's not the first, you guys... That Reddit search warrant was obtained in November, like the end of November, I think November 29th for Kaylee. Reddit of all places. Yeah. I've which said which is very interesting. The Gonzalves need to hire me if they want into her stuff. You know, you don't have to have a computer to get everything that's on a computer. Yeah. You it don't have to like have it- someone's phone to get everything that's on that phone. Yeah, and I think that they know some of that. I think that's how they got some of her stuff is from backups and cloud and stuff like that. But Mm. anyway, um, so now we're going to, I wanted to take a minute to honor Caden because he did seem like a really great, bright young man. He, He did seem that way. Um, And I'm sure he was. And it's really sad how he passed. And, you know, we've talked about the statistics with addiction in fraternities that say the statistic. One out of every two. One out of every two people that come out of a fraternity end up addicted to a substance. And one out of every three women leave their sorority assaulted. Essayed. Right. Uh, I think the stat that I read is assault in general. I think they combined, you know, sexual and physical. Um, I think if it's just SA, it's one out of four, but overall assault is one out of every three. Wow. If I'm remembering correct, I'm, I'm trying to pull that out of my head without verifying in front of me. So, but I believe that's correct. And, you know, addiction is not just like it you know i've heard so many people say like there's no way some of these victims or whatever were addicted to anything or were using any kind of drugs and i think caden is a perfect example of that's not true you don't have to look like an addict you don't have to look like anything like this drugs partying addiction is not just like a poor, ugly person's disease, which I don't believe in ugly people, but I'm just saying, you know, like that's what people act like is like, you have to look a certain type of way. You have to look rough or you have to look poor or something. And that's, you know, you can look like an upstanding person. You know, the world's businessmen, a lot of them are addicts. Like some of the richest people on the planet are addicts. I think finally just this last year, the statistic changed, but for like three years running before this last year uh the the leading demographic for opiate abuse was actual soccer moms were moms so women that had children of a mother's age between you know i think they said i i don't remember for sure i'll say 30 or 40 30s or 40s is what i'm remembering they quoted in their demographic and a mother and that was the key demographic that was uh, abusing opiates. So yeah, it is not a homeless person on your corner that is prioritizing food over dope. Yes, some of those people are addicts. Yes, some of them are on that street because of addiction. Um, But one out of every two 
fraternity members leave addicts and you or can, alcoholics, and which you can, same thing, but you, you know. Yeah, and you can be a, a functioning addict. And that doesn't mean you function in every aspect of your life. You may function well in, you know, maintaining your job and making money and supporting yourself and your habit, but you can really suck at all your relationships. You know what I mean? Or other yes. things. Um, so it, functioning doesn't mean functioning in every way and being perfect and okay. Um, you know, you're going to fail in some aspects when you have a mental illness like addiction. Yes. But. So let's let's move on to this article that I've seen tons of people bring up back when this happened. And it's from the Chronicle. Title is two people allegedly connected to March overdose death in Centralia released days before scheduled trial. So. This is Emma Bailey, who was 22 at the time, and Demetrius Robinson, who was 36 uh, mm. Emma Bailey, fun fact, lived right behind 1122 King Road. Her parents' house is right behind there. Really interesting. Yeah. Like, she's literally could just, like, walk across the street. Or I think she has to go through some, like, stairs. I don't know why there's so many stairs between residential streets in that area. But I think there's, like, some stairs and then, like, she's, like, there. That's interesting. Yeah, it's super, 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 super interesting. And this is a topic, these people is a, is a topic that everyone has wanted us to talk about for a long time. We're just now getting to some of these topics for you guys. So, um, yeah, because interesting. the Emma and Demetrius stuff started getting brought up to us like a really long time ago, many, many months ago. I would say 10 months ago. <laughs> you know, it was mid 2003 or 2003, 2023, um, when people were like, you got to look into these people. And while I, I'm not convinced that they are a part of the deaths, I do think there's some interesting things here. Um, and I think that we could dive even deeper into this, you guys, but there's some interesting things here that are indicators of me on what was going on around frat row what was going on in this neighborhood? What was going on in Pullman and Moscow when it comes to the drug game? And to think that none of the victims or people associated with the victims were at least doing party drugs? Oh, yeah. It, it's a college. I, I mean, it, for me at least, right? I understand that you're being All objective in your approach. Um, but uh, every single college, every single one, every Single Every single person one in that house did party drugs. Has a major guaranteed. Has a major drug problem. Yeah. Every single college. Well, there isn't a single one. It, what's really interesting is I. I don't know about that house, but I suggest looking up how traffickers literally target universities and towns. It's a never-ending market. You constantly have new people coming in. These are young people looking to party. Like it is the perfect environment to push drugs. Yeah. And also getting them to be foot soldiers for you. Fraternities and college kids are literally targeted. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, it, they're willing users. Yeah. So it's not like they're targeted in a way where they're like, oh, these poor college kids. No, they're look, college is about, Finding They're yourself willingly participating, yes, and partying and uh, you know, doing all the things you wish you could have done while living in your parents' house at high school. That's a, that's what it's about finding your freedom. So, most of these kids are, are ready to go, and I think that these statistics around fraternities being one in two, uh, leave an alcoholic or, or addict, um add to the reliability that they could be a source to, to deal. One out of every two is using a substance that, that is, that's a reliable percentage. Jeez. Mm -hmm. I know. So now let's get to basically what happened. Okay. Um, 
Emma and Demetrius were arrested uh, March 21st of 2023 about Caden's death. Um, they spent two months in jail, two months and five days, uh, and were about to literally face like trial. Like they were setting trial. Um, and then they literally just got released and the judge dismissed all charges. And there's been many oh, questions wow. over, and I, I literally have some documents here proving it's dismissed. Like now they did dismiss it without prejudice, meaning they could refile these charges if they wanted to, but yeah, they, well, duh, that's, they haven't. That's when someone turns. What do you mean? That, that, that is how they file and or drop charges when somebody is feeding information to the police. They want to be able to refile these if they don't uphold their duties of giving information. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's, that's a known fact in the whole drug game with the police. The police will target people to turn and tell them information about what's going on in an area. Absolutely. So they were each charged with one count of conspiracy to commit violation of the Uniform Controlled Substances Act in Lewis County Superior Court following a joint narcotics enforcement team investigation. Uh, on May 25th, the Lewis County Prosecutor's Office filed motions to dismiss the cases against Bailey and Robinson without prejudice. And, you know, the, the judge canceled the trial and was like, yeah, I'll dismiss all the charges. Um, so they are acute. They were accused of delivering cocaine to the man <clears throat> who to Caden, who was visiting from the university. He was visiting a friend, a fraternity brother, um, and partying and they delivered him cocaine and he OD'd, um, in Seattle on March 20th. Because it was cut with fentanyl. Yes. Yeah, P yeah. I've heard a bunch of people saying that's not true. It is true. No. Dude. It is 100% true, and I have the report proving it's true. It is so um, hard to overdose on cocaine, well, you guys. That is, he did not just have cocaine and fentanyl yeah. in his body. He oh. had more than that. Oh. So we'll get to that in a second. So he received care, uh, Caden received care at Harborview Medical Center for an overdose. Um, he was discharged at 2 a.m. and picked up by a friend. I've heard many people say that, that Emma literally picked him up. I don't know if that's a fact mm. or if it was his other friend. Um, but it does seem that they did meet back up. So, and he OD'd again and this time actually died. Um, but oh. we can go into more. Two back to back? What? Yeah, so the friend told law enforcement he went to sleep and stopped breathing shortly before the friend called 911. Um, and they were being held on a $100,000 bond. 100000 each, by the way, which is quite a bit. Um, but I, I found an article that goes way more into depth about this, and I highly appreciated it. Highly appreciated it. Because there's a lot of confusion surrounding what exactly happened and if the cocaine was cut or not. It was. It absolutely was cut with fentanyl because when they revived him, like, or when they were trying to get him out of it, he responded to Narcan and they obviously did toxicology. Mm -hmm. And I, we have that report. Um, anyway, so. Yeah, I. It's so rare to OD on cocaine, you guys. Like, I, for anybody that has absolutely no knowledge of these things, can you overdose on cocaine? Yes, you absolutely can. But a lot of time you go into a cardiac arrest where your heartbeat is pumping too much. It's not the same kind of OD that you would see in uh, opiates. And it's actually a lot harder. I've known people that have massive, huge, insane tolerances with cocaine where they're able to do like, you know, five grams a night or five grams a day. Yeah. With opiates, it does not work like that, especially when you're messing with fentanyl, especially when, uh, you don't know fentanyl's in your cocaine. Look at the Kansas three, right? 
same situation. It is exactly the same situation. Um, and I, I don't know if we have the full toxicology report for them yet. Is the full one out? I'm not sure. Anyway, so. that's not the topic. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So Caden Young is the first time. Okay. He ODs. He gets revived using CPR and Narcan. Um, and then he is released less than 12 hours later. Then seven hours after that, he dies in his sleep on March 21st. And I, there's reports of him snoring. And a cop said that snoring is like him taking his last bits of air. That's what it reminded the cop of. I don't know if there's some kind of recording or something, but I don't know. A maybe the friend was described. dying? I don't Why know. Wasn't someone giving him CPR. Yeah, I don't know. I, let me look for the snoring comment. That's real quick. really strange because, uh, you know, if someone is like out and you're hearing weird sounds and you're noticing that their breathing is suppressed, w why wouldn't you give them CPR? Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand it. This I describes the whole situation, though. Oh, yes. So the, a friend showed the police a video he took of Young snoring loudly at 8 a.m. Based on the snore, I recognize it to sound similar to the snorting uh, sound people who are dying commonly did with their last breaths. This is what Officer Timothy O'Dell wrote in his police report. Okay, so let's let's get into what actually happened that, that night. That doesn't you guys. sound objective at all. Uh, no, not really, but um, anyway. So the police report the police report basically describes a chaotic a chaotic series of events, okay? It's a mess. Um, and this is in a hotel in Seattle where Emma and Demetrius are. Um, and this is where both of them summon emergency responders on March 20th. Um, they said nothing out of the ordinary occurred between his exit from the hospital and his arrival at a friend's apartment in Centralia, 83 miles away. So Emma and Demetrius, after he overdoses, like he, literally 83 miles away from his friend that he's supposed to be visiting and he's in Seattle with Emma and Demetrius in a hotel. The, that's really strange uh so emma knew him from the u of i uh the friend who reported young's death later contacted the woman on behalf of the police to try to set up a meeting to purchase drugs according to the police report so the police could find her um, love you guys, but not right now. Emma responded on Snapchat. That was super scary working through the situation. This man literally died in D's arms. We love Caden and I want him to be straight and I want to make sure he rests and is taken care of and understands how serious that was. I want to see him healthy. We love you guys. And then they feed him more. I guess so. Or he stole it. I have no idea. Cause you know, if somebody's like a real addict, if and you have it on you, they're not they may not take no for an answer. They may wait till you go to sleep. <laughs> this sounds like a whole night of partying. He OD'd in the morning. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'm not sure. But um So, so he was staying with his former fraternity brother in Centralia, the same man that would pick him up from the hospital and take him home the day he died. Young then traveled to Seattle where he spent time in the Holiday Inn with Emma and Demetrius. The hotel manager told police she received a call from the woman asking the manager to call 911 on March 20th, the manager and maintenance worker went up to the room to find Young lying unconscious, vomiting, and blue in color. Uh, the manager told the, told police the man and woman were freaking out. The man splashed ice water on Young, slapped him in the face, and was performing CPR until the medics arrived. 
Um, after medics used a low dose of naloxone, which is like it's Narcan, uh, to revive him, he began breathing again and became conscious. The police reported that the man and woman seemed emotional with the woman falling to her knees and the man hitting the wall and saying, thank God. Police said the man made a statement to an officer confirming that Caden ingested fentanyl. At 2.23 p.m., Young was taken to Harborview Medical Center. He was treated for his fentanyl overdose. The hospital released him at 2 a.m. March 21st, which is his former fraternity brother that picked him up. So he was treated and then released. We can't get anything about his medical trip, obviously, because of HIPAA. Um, after he pick him after, so the fraternity brother told the police that after he picked up Caden, Caden fell asleep multiple times on the drive back to the apartment and was so out of it that the friend had to guide him because he could not keep his eyes open. Young fell asleep at the apartment at 4 30 AM and the Centralia friend checked on him for several hours, according to the police statements. Okay. So that's the, do you understand what's happening? What? So, Emma and Demetrius were not there the second time. Okay. Okay. They were only there the first time. Got it. So, he's with them in Seattle at the Holiday Inn. He ODs. He gets treatment for that OD. And then his fraternity brother picks him up. And clearly, he still has dope on him. Yeah. From Emma and Demetrius. Yeah. Because he was passing out in the car on the way home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's when, you know, his friend kept checking on him after that over and over. That's when he took the video and ended up showing it to the police officer and that whole thing about the snoring. Um, and at 8.39 a.m., the friend woke up to Caden unresponsive. The friend and a roommate attempted CPR and called 911 at 907. Why did it take them that long to call 911? He was unresponsive at 8:39 a.m. and they were doing CPR and didn't call 911 until 907. I don't know. That's like 20 minutes. minutes. 8.39 a.m. to 9.07. Yeah, 30 minutes. Why would you wait that long? That seems sketchy to me. If I wake up and somebody's unresponsive and or blue, I'm calling 911 immediately and doing CPR while I'm on the phone. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. I, you I guys, agree if you. someone's ODing, do not wait to call. Call immediately. Yeah. No matter what. It is It is literally life or death. Like, you have to call. It is. So, first responders arrive. They don't get a pulse. Um, so, they did a drug test on um, Caden. And he was he had passed. He had fentanyl, benzodiapines, marijuana, <sighs> cocaine, and alcohol all in his system. Oh, opiates and benzos are so dangerous. Well, he My had gosh. Okay, fentanyl, benzodiapines, marijuana, and alcohol are all downers. They are they depress your central nervous system. Cocaine is an upper. That's a whole lot of downers. And yes, opiates and benzodiapines do not mix well. Like you can very easily overdose, not even using fentanyl, using something else that's weaker with benzos like Xanax. Um, if you mix opiates and Xanax, it's a bad combination. It can get real dangerous real fast. Yeah, geez. And he had all of that in his system. So... Police believe the woman who provided the drugs to Caden um, was a safety concern and was actively trafficking cocaine that was laced with fentanyl. They tracked her down immediately. 
Um, her license plate was entered into the flock camera system, which was automated license plate recognition technology, and police began tracking her phone. Using phone pings, they were able to find her and Demetrius. Officers arrested them, and that's where we're at now. They found a white substance in the woman's car. Um, it was cocaine containing fentanyl. Yep. Interesting. So that is what happened when Caden passed away. And um, I wanted to read through all that because I thought it was important because like most people, I was confused and also thought that Emma and Demetrius were involved with the entire thing. Okay. That they were like, they picked him because this is exactly how it was said on multiple channels is that they picked him up from the hospital and gave him more drugs. And they might have given him more drugs, you guys, because he clearly had some when he got out of the hospital or else he wouldn't have OD'd again. Yeah. So they very well could have been like, because if you have been on this stuff for a while, you're going to withdraw. So they could have given him more. I mean, they totally could have. Or he had some left in his bag or something. You would think the police would check, though, and make yeah. sure he doesn't. I would think, um, well, not, the police don't always go to an OD, so. The but, police absolutely went. I mean, I've I've been there when police don't go. You're sure okay, the police went? Yes, the, the first OD? Yes, the police came. Okay. How do you know? I don't know. It just said first responders. You're right. Now that I'm thinking about it. Police don't always go. Not for ODs. Huh. You would think they would. Why? Why wouldn't you? I mean, I don't think they need to charge drug addicts. I don't either. Then why go? Might have saved Caden's life. I don't know. Anyway, this charge didn't stick, clearly, you guys. And I would like um, to add this video clip of the hearing and give credit to the channel that it's on where the charges get dropped. Um, and I also want to mention that Demetrius Robinson, Robinson has a very extensive, and I mean extensive, rap sheet. But the weird thing is, is that he hasn't had any charges stick that I have been able to find since 2019. Everything has been dismissed that he was charged with. All right, I signed that order. Uh, Mr. Robinson, your matter is dismissed and you will be, you should be released on this matter today unless you're being held on anything else. What? All right. All right, and then you want to call Emma May Bailey? I don't know. Sorry, I, don't I don't have Bailey present at the moment, but I will in just a minute. That's fine. Who do you have next? This is signature on the omnibus order. I was State versus Emma Bailey, 23 1 167, uh, Will Halstead for the state. Clark, I'm here. Oh, Jacob Clark for the uh, defendant, and then uh, yeah, did the other matter. Okay, so I've handed up to the court a uh, motion in order to dismiss without prejudice at this time. Well, as I have to, and I've signed off, Your Honor. I see that. Okay, uh, Miss Bailey, I've just signed an order dismissing your case without prejudice. You'll be released on this matter. Uh, today, if you don't have any other holds. Do you have any questions? No, Your Honor. All right. That's all. Thank you. I believe that's all for the jail at this time, Your Honor. He gets charged for something, it gets dismissed. He gets charged for something, it gets dismissed. Including this with Caden. Interesting. Odd. And this is a violent criminal. He, on his rap sheet, he has things like literally holding somebody hostage and beating her. 
like a girl holding, like there was some kidnapping or something like that. Um, and holding her and literally harming her. Um, he has SA, he has numerous charges that are extremely violent and he is a known drug trafficker. And with the kind of stuff that was on their social media when, you know, like it was very clear when you look at D Demetrius and Emma's social media, they were like a couple or like partners in crime or whatever, because they're both, you know, like trying to promote her as a model and, you know, acting like they're some kind of gurus uh, and can give people advice and they're going to become millionaires and literally had pictures like of Coke. Like they weren't hiding it. Jeez. If you're going to show pictures of like Coke in the background, does that, are you just stupid or is it you're untouchable because you are basically have a salary because you're an informant? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're a full-time informant because sure this feels like it. It sure seems that way. It sure seems that way. Yeah. So based off of his rap sheet and then the fact that no charges have stuck since 2019 and they're serious charges, all of them, every single one gets dismissed. And that's why I want to play this little piece of the court hearing where it gets dismissed because they clearly made a deal. Yeah. This is the here. only channel that I've seen have any of the court hearing, which shout out to you. It's absolutely incredible that you have that. Um, I wish I could get like the raw footage, but you know, that would take a little while. I'd, I'd have to send in a FOIA and I'm, I'm just not patient enough. So I want to know what you guys think about the story. I want like, did you know the full story of what actually happened to Caden? Because honestly, I was still a little confused before I read all of it on camera. <laughs> yeah, um, I didn't know it, but it's interesting. And look at the evidence there with them getting off on charges. Like even Emma, where we saw her throw, take that thing out of her pants. On body, on the camera footage, the body cam footage where she took something out of her pants and threw it in the trash. Yeah. You can't tell me the cops didn't see that and got her DUI um, thrown out too. Yeah, interesting. Sounds like some informants to me, guys. Um, and it's pretty blatantly obvious if I'm being honest. It doesn't even feel like speculation at this point. Um Anyway, I want to know what you guys think about it all. Um, do you think there's any connection here? There have been a lot of connections made between Emma and uh, the victims of the Idaho for killings. And we could go deeper into those connections because there's quite a few. Like she lives right behind them. And there's a lot more uh, like the six roommate and lots of other things. So if you want us to dig deeper into this topic, definitely let me know. Let me know your opinions. And that's it. All right.